Have you ever received a bad gift? I mean, I, I, not just a little bit, but just a crummy present. Happens to me all the time. Some of the gifts are really rather amazing. Uh, years ago, I made a mistake, and I was a kid's pastor, and I let people know I like penguins. I got every imaginable penguin thing you could get. I got stuffed penguins. I got remote control penguins. I got penguin pencil holders. I got penguin air fresheners. I just had penguins everywhere. Now, I don't like penguins. Don't give me a penguin anything. <laughs> One year at Christmas, everybody else got all these amazing gifts. I got a wooden desk game like a little wooden game to play at my desk. You know what I do at my desk? I actually work at my desk. If I wanna play a game, I get up and go somewhere else. I'll sit at my desk and think, I think I wanna play a game. I get bizarre golf gifts that I don't recognize and, and I would never use. I get clothes that don't fit. I've got everything from an extra small to an extra large. I was honored by the extra large, thank you very much. One time I got a gift, no explanation, just a bag of dried black-eyed peas. Okay, I don't like peas, green peas, black-eyed peas, whatever peas, I don't like peas, ever. I'm never gonna eat them. Don't give me peas. I have it in my office, I, for, I meant to bring it with me. I'll bring it up with me tomorrow. I, one year, I got a signed photo of Pastor Parker and Aaron Stone. Well, that's a precious gift. And for some reason, mostly because we have a bunch of smart Alex in our church, I get all kinds of pickle gifts, all kinds. I just, I just brought a few of them up here with me. Uh, not, not all of them, I, I, get, I get pickle Christmas ornaments. I get, as a matter of fact, here it is. I got this pickle Christmas ornament this year. Thanks so much. Let me tell you something, it's never gonna be on my tree. I don't care if you're my favorite person in the church. I'm not putting the pickle on my tree. It's abomination. That'd be like putting a picture of Satan on a Christmas tree. You wouldn't do that. I got a pickle air freshener from my car so my car could smell like pickles. Keep your sorry gift. I don't want it. I don't want, it. I don't want anything pickles. This one was actually kind of useful. I, I, I vented my frustrations. This week I vented on Pastor Brian. It's, it's a pickle and it, it shoots little, little pregnant pickles. I mean, it's, it's really quite amazing. And then quite possibly, now listen to me, don't start. Don't think, well, I'm gonna be funny too. I'm gonna give him a pickle gift. I'm not gonna send a thank you note for a pickle gift. I'm not gonna bring it up here and mention it in a message. Your pickled gift will be confined to the dumpster outside my office, okay? So don't do it. I know you, I know you too well. Don't send me pickle cards. Don't send me pickle pictures. Don't send me pickles. Am I being clear? I don't like pickles. I don't want cucumbers either. Cucumbers are raw pickles. They're horrible. There's nothing worse. You people have problems. This is the worst thing I've ever received. I don't know if I have a picture of this to put on the screen. I, I don't think I can get a, enough of a close up. It's Lester's Fixin' Pickle Flavored Soda. Let me just tell you, there's something wrong with that, people. Somebody very twisted gave that to me. But I don't just get bad gifts. I take great joy in giving bad gifts. In retaliation, I love to buy random odd gifts for our team. The weirdest thing Pastor Rod's gotten me as a gift? Funny you should ask. I'm wearing them today. The weirdest, strangest, oddest gift I've ever gotten from my husband, Pastor Rod? Oh, I have it in a special place. J just a second. What's the 
Weirdest thing Pastor Rod's ever given me? Glad you asked. This is Carl. I don't even know. He's a giant statue of a head with some holes in it that weighs 150 pounds and was just in my office. I don't know if it's strange, but he got me this hat. I, I kind of like it. The weirdest gift Pastor Rod has ever given me is this cat outfit with a matching hat. But that's not even the weirdest part. Betty! He got us the same thing, and he expects us to wear these things on stage. Oh, you want to see the strangest gift Pastor Rod's ever given me? Just wait right here. I can't help it. I just find things, and it just, it, when I see it, it just looks like them. And so I just know they'd love it. I was in a shoe store yesterday. There was a sign that said, due to COVID-19, we are no longer doing shoe fittings. <laughs> well, that's all you have is shoes. I mean, you mean to say I can't try on shoes before I buy them? Can you imagine how many exchanges that store must get if they sell anything? I annually, annually contribute to one of the biggest shopping days of the year, the day after Christmas, when everybody takes the gifts they don't like back to the store. If it's useless, the wrong size, the wrong color, if you already have it, if you can't figure out what it is, no problem. You take it back and you get the right size or the right color or you get something you like. On December 26th, you exchange the bad thing you have and don't want for a good thing you don't have and really want. I want to look with you today at a different kind of exchange. Jesus gives you a chance to exchange something you struggle with for something only he can give. It's an amazing offer and a powerful promise. Before I get to what Jesus gives, let me talk to you a few minutes about what you exchange. I enjoy talking about areas that are my strengths, where I'm modeling good habits and behavior and I can share principles. Weaknesses aren't as fun to talk about, but I suspect many of you struggle with this same thing. I have a tendency to work too long, schedule too full, and to commit to way too much. I don't do well at things like taking, off, taking days off and resting. Now, I'm not looking for sympathy. In fact, I don't deserve sympathy for an out of balance life. I have a lot of good excuses. Well, we've got a big church, that's just what it takes. Or, I don't wanna be the slow down and make everyone wait on me. I say, well, I've always been this way. Like somehow always being this way is a good reason to keep being this way. Or I can do anything for a while. I'm famous for that statement that I've been making for over 19 years as pastor. I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm also not looking for lectures. I've given myself plenty of lectures. Several of my close friends have talked to me about adjusting my pace. Our board has challenged me to change. Our leadership team has made their opinions clear. I'm not arguing with them. They're right. I, I need to make some adjustments. And I've asked them to hold me accountable so I absolutely will make the necessary changes. Now you probably haven't noticed because I still look so young. <laughs> Thank you. A little slow on that applause. Apparently all the pickle givers are in this room. I, I've aged a, a little bit in 19 years. Here's what I looked like when I started this journey as your pastor. Okay, not really. This is what I looked like when I started. Still a pretty big difference, isn't it? Thank you, Daryl. I want you to know I'm not talking to you as an amazing expert, but a fellow struggler 
who recognizes the challenge and is committed to change. Now, before you write an email correcting me, I, I want you first to evaluate yourself. Are you tired and worn out? Maybe it's more than just today. You are pushing yourself to the breaking point. I already just saw somebody nudge her spouse. Maybe like me, you've got a lot of good reasons. Well, I have to, this is what it takes. I don't have a choice. If I don't do it, who will? I've always been this way. I'll survive. Regardless of your reasons or excuses, you're exhausted and weary. Is that you? Are you pushing yourself too hard for too long? Now, I understand that can be a loaded question. If you admit you're worn out, am I going to lecture you about getting the right amount of sleep the night before you come to church so you can give your best to God? Am I going to watch more closely to make sure you don't fall asleep while I'm speaking? No, no tricks. I just want you to be honest with me and honest with yourself. Are you deep down tired and exhausted? Tuesday, July 14th, I came to the sanctuary and I recorded a message designed for pastors. It was 15 pressures pastors are facing, 15 ways to manage and cope, five ways for people to help and pray for their pastor. By Friday of that week, the video had been watched more than 80,000 times. It's now been watched over 145,000 times. And on the video, I said, if you're struggling, email me. Pastor, if you're struggling, email me and include your phone number. If you need to talk, I'm not too busy to talk. I got emails and calls and messages and texts from all over the country and literally all over the world, every continent but Antarctica, where apparently they're not having a COVID issue. Everyone, pastors, saying you spoke to me. I'm worn out and weary. I'm discouraged. I just want to give up and quit. This has been the most difficult year in history for pastors. The pressures of coronavirus, racial tension, economic strain, and offended people has them at a breaking point. They feel like whatever they do is wrong. I've heard some crazy stories. One pastor asked someone in the church who had symptoms and was waiting for results from a COVID test to take the week off church to protect others. The person got angry and said, that's it. I am never coming back to your church. Pastors are breaking under the strain. They're quitting the church and leaving the ministry. They just can't take it anymore. Now, you may not be a pastor, but I've heard from many of you, many people who say, Pastor Rod, I'm tired. I'm worn out. I don't know why but I've got no energy, I've got no strength. I feel like just giving up. The pressure, the stress, all the changes, all the fear, the ever constant change has you worried and worn out. The Bible word for that is weary. The dictionary definition of weary is physically or mentally exhausted by hard work, exertion, strain, fatigued, tired. Does that describe you? Now, sometimes it's your fault. You go too fast, too far, and you don't take care of yourself. You try to do more than you should or can. You refuse to allow anyone to help you. You call that independence, but it's really just stubborn pride. You don't take care of yourself. You're not getting uh, the right amount of sleep. You're not eating right. Other times, it seems like there's nothing you can do about it. Maybe you're caring for an aging parent who's sick. Or you're a single mom balancing school, work, kids, and COVID. Maybe you don't have the time or the money to take a real break. You might be facing physical challenges, sickness, or disease. 
Perhaps your business is short of employees or your kid is sick. Adding that to your already busy life has you missing sleep and feeling stressed. You have to work overtime or a, a second job to make ends meet. Every area in your life has stress, marriage, family, work, school. You're worn out and exhausted with no end in sight. You're headed for a crash. It's inevitable. Exhaustion leads to physical problems. Your body and immune system are weakened by your schedule and stress. A good, good indication you're going too fast, too far for too long is when you have just unusual symptoms that you have no explanation for. Exhaustion leads to relational problems. You're, you're more impatient. You say things and you react to people in a different way than usual. And, and you're even aware of that. There's more tension in your marriage, in your family. Your performance at work or at school suffers because of your tired, weakened condition. It affects your grades, it affects your work. Not only are you in danger of a physical collapse, exhaustion is dangerous for your spiritual condition. I've shared this acronym with you before. You are more vulnerable to sin and temptation when you are hungry, angry, Lonely or tired, halt. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. When you're weary and when your defenses are weakened, it's dangerous. Now I wanna pause and tell you, listen to me, look at me. Being weary and run down is not a sin. It is not a sin to be tired. It can happen to anyone at any age. Parents, grandparents, Single adults, students, even kids find themselves on empty at the end of their strength. So what do you do? Is there an answer? Is there hope? Jesus knew what you would face. He understood weariness and fatigue, so he offered a way out, a beautiful promise found in Matthew chapter 11. Listen to the words of Jesus who said, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, now that's a phrase you don't hear very often, if ever in today's world, take my yoke or yoke. In order to really understand that promise, we've got to figure out what it means. A yoke connected to oxen. When two oxen were yoked together, it required both animals to work together at the same speed and strength. They had to keep up with each other. The animal had no choice. The yoke was on them, the whip was cracked, and the difficult work was done. Throughout scripture, the idea of being yoked to something was not a good thing. Being yoked speaks of subjection and slavery. It's working long and hard because you're forced to. You don't have a choice. Yoking yourself to Jesus is the opposite. It doesn't result in hard work because his yoke is gentle and easy and light. Jesus said, come to me. Place yourself in the yoke. Choose to join to me. Connect yourself to me. I won't place unnecessary burdens on you. I won't be mean or cruel. When you get here alongside me, I will do the pulling for you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you yoke yourself to Jesus, you move at his speed instead of your own. He does the striving, he does the pulling, he does the hard work. It's arriving on time, his time, not ahead of him or behind him, 
but beside him. There was another meaning to yoke. In Bible days, when a young Hebrew boy was educated and at least 14 years old, if he desired to continue education and become a rabbi, he first had to find a rabbi who was willing to teach him. In order to prove his worth as a follower, the would-be student was gruelingly tested in his knowledge of the Torah and other books of the law. He was put through difficult debates to prove his ability to speak and to argue and to reason under pressure. If he passed all the tests and it looked like he would make a good rabbi, then he would hear these words. Take my yoke upon you which would mean he was accepted. Every young man longed to hear those words. He would then be totally committed, devoted to learning and becoming like the rabbi. And Jesus says, you don't have to do a bunch of work. You don't have to prove yourself. You pass the test. Come to me. You're accepted and selected. Take my yoke upon you. We're in this together. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Jesus made that offer, not just to the best and the brightest or to the privileged few, but to all, everyone who is weary or burdened. Jesus said, if you're beat down and weary, if you're chewed up, and I have nothing left. Come to me, join me, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's look back at the definition of weary, physically or mentally exhausted by hard work, exertion, strain, fatigued, tired. The dictionary definition of rest is the refreshing quiet or repose of sleep, refreshing ease or inactivity after exertion or labor. Relief or freedom, especially from anything that wearies, troubles, or disturbs. A period or interval of inactivity, repose, solitude, or tranquility. In the original language, the word used here for rest meant in deep peace. I've got a question for you. How would you like deep peace? I want to take those definitions and I want to put everything we've learned into the verse and we're going to make our own personal in our language version of the promise. Are you ready? Come to me, all who are physically or mentally exhausted by hard work, exertion, or strain. Come to me, all of you who are fatigued or tired or stressed. Every one of you, each of you, you are all welcome with me. You don't have to be smart or special, or elite, I accept you. Connect yourself to me, walk with me, and I will give you refreshing quiet and ease. I will give you relief and freedom, especially from anything that worries, troubles, or disturbs you. I will give you solitude and tranquility. I will give you a deep peace. Become my servant and learn from me. Walk with me day by day. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, it's easy. And my burden is light. Doesn't that sound amazing? You can trade weariness for rest and weakness for strength. Several years ago, after a long, hard week, I fell into bed, uh, desperately needing rest and sleep. And I, I had a dream that so impressed me, I, I wrote it down, I still remember it vividly. 
In my dream, our choir was singing a song that's not really a typical choir song. And they, they were just on the chorus singing, his strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can carry on. And as they sang, the presence of Jesus filled this room. And on their own, people started walking to the front and kneeling down, tears streaming down their faces, giving their weakness to God and receiving his strength. And in my dream, I watched for a moment from my seat on the front row. And then I walked to the front and I laid on the floor face down and began to weep. And there was an unbelievable sense of rest and peace in his presence. I woke up with tears running down my face, knowing that I'd been in the presence of God. And I sensed God reminding me, and I sensed God speaking this to you today. When you come near the end of your strength, you're nowhere near the end of mine because my strength never ends. So give me your weakness and your weariness. Come to me with your tiredness and fatigue. I'll replace it with a strength that is way beyond your own because in your weakness, I am strong. When the Apostle Paul was exhausted and weary, he heard from God. We studied this promise May 17. Paul wrote, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul said something real, really unusual. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and in insults and in hardship and persecution and difficulties. And it finishes with this statement, for when I am weak, then I'm strong. When you pretend to be strong, when you say, I got it, I can handle this, I can do it, I don't need a break, I'm good. You operate in your own strength. When you acknowledge your weakness, that's an opportunity for the strength of God to fill you. It's when you're weak. It's when you admit that you're tired and need his strength. That's when you become strong. Jesus said, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. If you're weary and burdened, Take it to Jesus. Admit you're tired. Acknowledge your weakness. Don't fake it because he already knows anyway. It makes no sense to be fake with Jesus. Be honest and know that Jesus has a place for you. He accepts you as his follower, even with all your weaknesses. Take his yoke upon you. Learn from him. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you're not yoked or connected to him, then you can't know the peace and the rest that only he can give. And today I just encourage you, connect yourself to Jesus. Connect yourself to him. You say, well, I don't know if I qualify. No, no, no. Jesus said, all who are weary and burdened, come to me. So what does that look like? That coming to me, it's not, just an, it's not just kind of a passive sit here and hope. It's changed the way you approach life. 
It's an adapt his way and his rhythm. Connect yourself to Jesus. Take his yoke upon you. Learn his pace and experience his grace. How does that happen? The only way a student could learn from the rabbi was to listen to his voice, to do life with him, to spend time with him. The only way that you can ever learn to live and walk at Jesus' pace and in his strength is to spend time with him, to listen for his voice. And he's calling you. He's calling out to you if you've been pushing and you're weary, and it's time to exchange that for rest. Hear the voice of Jesus today through my weird words. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, if you're not connected to Jesus, people have lied to you and they've told you it's a bunch of rules and it makes life more difficult. And it's just, no, Jesus has come and I'll give you rest. We're going to, together as a church family, take communion. When Jesus instituted the first communion with his disciples, he told them, do this in remembrance of me. And I think he knew that in the middle of all the stress and striving and pushing and pulling and stuff, you'd sometimes forget the access to peace and strength you have in him. So today we're going to take communion together as a reminder that Jesus is our source. Now I understand that hundreds come in person and thousands and tens of thousands watching online, we want to invite you to join us in communion. So as the ushers are distributing communion here, we're going to give you a few moments. Pastor Brad is going to lead us in worship. And I want you to go find a symbol that you can use for communion. If you've got grape juice, grace, but it doesn't have to be. It can be anything, some liquid and some bread or a cracker. The important thing is not what the symbol is, but what we remember. And if you haven't yet connected yourself to Jesus, stay with me, because I'm going to give you that opportunity in just a minute. The juice or whatever you got that you hold in your hand is a symbol. It's a symbol of the, the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary. And now we come to that part about connecting to him. Say, how can I connect to God? That was, that's the whole reason why God sent his son. That's why the reason why Jesus left heaven and came to earth. That's the reason why he went to the cross so we could connect to him. And on the cross, his sacrifice paid the price for our sins. And so we can come to him, not just with our weariness and our fatigue, but we can come with our guilt and shame. We can come with our faults and our imperfections. We can come with our fears and our weaknesses. And he forgives. And he paid the price so we don't have to pay the price. And I want to pray with you today. And if if you've never connected yourself to Jesus, or if in some time in the past you connected to him, but you've, you've got too busy or you've just wandered away or done your own thing, I wanna pray and in this moment, I encourage you to take his yoke upon you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to pay the price for our sin, to bear our, our guilt and our shame. Thank you for the price paid on the cross whereby we find forgiveness we don't have to earn it we don't deserve it that's why they call it grace and we're grateful Lord I pray with people right now who've never connected themselves to you who were at one time were and aren't now Lord we come to you and we take your yoke upon us. We connect ourselves to you. Lord, we ask you to teach us your rhythm and your pace and for us to experience your love and your grace. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness and we thank you for your blood that was shed that pays the price for our sin. And as we drink this 
symbol together. We remember your sacrifice. The wafer or bread or whatever you found, again, is not special, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of Jesus' body that was broken on the cross. Because his body was broken, he experienced sickness and pain. He experienced, are you ready? Weakness and fatigue. And because he experienced all those things, we can come to him broken and be healed. We can come to him weak and be strong. We can come to him weary and be refreshed. We can come to him empty and leave filled. And that's what I wanna pray for you right now. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross. Thank you that you understand our weakness. Lord, I pray for people who are broken down and weary and exhausted and tired and worried and stressed and just feel at the end of their rope. Lord, I pray right now that you would come and you'd replace that with your sweet peace. Lord, that we would learn the gentle, easy, easy rhythms of grace. And we would find what you promised, rest for our souls. Lord, I pray right now for people who are listening to me and even as I talk, think, well, it's not going to change. There's nothing that's gonna change. It's just gonna keep going and going because this is never gonna end. Lord, I pray right now that you would replace that with your peace and with rest for their souls. We remember your sacrifice. We're so grateful for it, Lord. We're great for the healing and the strength that becomes from the price you paid on the cross. In Jesus' name, we remember it as we eat this bread. What a powerful service. I love church and I love going to church with you online. Thanks for joining us today. I am grateful you are a part of our online community. If you experience the Lord in a special way, or maybe you just want to share your story, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me anytime throughout the week directly at ploy at firstnlr.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media and stay up to date with everything First NLR. One of our team members is posting those links in the chat right now. And make sure to download the First NLR app so we can send you updates and you can watch any message online at any time. If you'd like to know more about the online community or get more involved, check out the What's Next tab at the bottom of chat. We don't want you to just be a viewer. We want you to be a part of our diverse community of believers from around the world. Thanks for coming to church today, and I pray the Lord's blessings on you and your family this week. See you next week.